One of the things I've been working on in the background is the dash for my SSP, my 87 Jefferson County Police Mustang. And the car has a blue interior from the factory. Right now, it had a black dash that I pulled out and actually sold it because that dash was for a 90 to 93 car, which is a little different from the 87 to 89 cars. This dash came out of another uh, vehicle with a blue interior. It's not the original one to the car. I have no idea what happened to it. It had already been swapped to that black dash by the time I got it. So one of the things I'm gonna do while I'm doing the restoration is go through and clean this dash up. The main difference between the 87 to 89 cars, this hole right here is for the fuse box. Now on the 90 to 93 cars, this hole is kind of solid. There's really nothing there because they mute, they moved the fuse box under the dash instead of in the dash. So there's a cover that goes over top of this. I've got a couple of them. What I'm going to do is go through and take all of these inserts out where like the gauges bolt on and where the uh, gauge hood bolts on, the radio, the HV, uh, HVAC controls, all this stuff, I'm gonna pull these little inserts, these plastic, um, actually metal inserts out. I'm gonna clean this dash up really, really good. It's been sitting in my garage for a few years, so there's a lot of dust, a lot of cobwebs and stuff that are in this, and I'm going to wipe this down really good with some degreaser. I'm gonna pull this dash pad off. What I wanna do is find the color of this before it was exposed to UV light. And it's really difficult to tell, but so this part here would be under the glove box. This part would not have much UV exposure. It would be uh, pretty much dark the whole time. And the reason I'm going to do this is, is I have a chart from SEM. And this chart, let me grab it real quick. So this chart right here is the color chart for all of the air aerosols, like interior paint, interior spray paint that SEM makes. What I wanna do is find an area that hasn't been exposed to the UV light so that I can get an accurate match on the color. Now this blue mist color that's right here, and it's hard to tell because this dash does look a little gray compared to that. I believe that is going to be my closest color that they have. Uh, the shadow blue color is pretty close, but it's too dark. There's a Pacific blue right here that's pretty close, um, but it's too bright. And this blue mist is very, very close. What I'm thinking is if I pull this dash pad off, because I'm probably going to get another one, even though this one's not in terrible shape, it is kind of starting to show its age. Um, it's blowing out around the opening for the center vents. I want to get this off and I want to look at the dash underneath of it. it. has to come off to paint the dash anyway. What I'll do is I'll clean this really, really good. I'll get, um, I'll find which one of these colors matches the black part of the upper dash because we're going to go through and we're going to paint all this stuff before we, before we put it back in. Even though this is black, it's in really good shape. Um, I've got the insert that goes in here. I've also got the hood that goes over top of the gauges speaker covers. I've got all that stuff. I'm going to paint it all because that will protect the plastic and it will also make the interior look much nicer. It won't look so faded out and dirty with a new coat of black paint on the upper parts and blue paint on the lower parts. Plus, as I go through and replace pieces like the console and some of the quarter panels and things like that, all of it's going to match because I'm going to use the same color from SEM. If I were to piece this together to try to get it to match now, I'm going to have about three different colors of blue just because I've got three different interior pieces, uh, three different or interior pieces from three different vehicles. They were all exposed to different layers of sunlight. They were all in different environments. There's no way any of that stuff is going to match. I can guarantee a match by respraying all this stuff with this SEM color. And just like some of the previous videos I did on the SSP, anytime I'm working on these cars, I'm going to bag and tag my hardware. 
And what I mean by that, of course, just anything that I'm working on, I'm going to put in these bags. That way I can keep it organized. So all these little inserts, as I pop them off, they're going in the bag. All the screws and stuff like that uh, that go around, like this is where the HVAC heat and air controller goes. All that stuff's getting bagged. That way I can keep track of all this stuff. I'll even try to save these little rubber bumpers that um, absorb some of the vibration and stuff. Even though I know in the future I'll probably put like a little bit of foam in here just to cut down on some of the vibration, I'll still pop that stuff out and I'll have it for future reference. I'll flip the dash over and I've got my defrost vent out. I've got my center stack with the uh, blend door. And then we've got our left hand and right hand dash vents out as well. Interesting that this thing looks to be molded in gray and then it was painted blue. So I'm not sure if this dash was originally gray and then it was painted blue. Um, I did notice, and I'll flip it back over here in a minute, that the area where it's black, underneath where the speaker holes are, um, this is where the speaker would mount in the dash. There was, you know, two speed clips there that the speaker screws into. Underneath that black paint, it's gray. So it leads me to believe that these were originally molded in gray and then painted whatever color the interior was, whether that be solid black, whether it be uh, this gray color or blue or red or even tan in some instances. So I'm gonna dig into this a little further, clean this up a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do on the back side is take out these three nuts here, which holds in that dash pad. I'm gonna push the inserts out from the back side uh, that hold on like the dimmer switch and some of the other stuff from the inside or from the front side. I'll push those out from the back side where I've got access. The front of the dash is all blown apart now. We've got it all cleaned up. And I found even more evidence that this thing has been painted from the factory. The dash pad actually rubbed the paint off in this area here. It was bolted on these two holes and the bottom here. So my idea of trying to match the paint under here is gonna be very tough. I'm gonna to have to get kind of in this area. I might have to just go back to the original idea of trying to match it right here behind the glove box door. Or I could even come over here where the fuse box or like under this panel here, because there is a plastic panel that goes over top of this under the steering column. So this might be a good spot. It shouldn't have had much UV, but if they ever took the dash apart, um, you know, like had this panel off to replace the multifunction switch or the ignition switch or anything like that, this would have been exposed to UV light. Now, something I did find, there's a hole cut right here, and I don't remember this being there from the factory. It's very rough looking. There's nothing that really bolts in this area. Uh, the console would bolt up here. The top part of the gauge cluster would bolt here, and then uh, that bottom trim piece would bolt in there. So this may have been a cutout for some sort of switch, uh, nitrous or something. It's a very rough cut. Looks like it was done with a Dremel tool. This will be hidden, and I'm not super worried about this. Um, this is not going to be like a concourse restoration. Um, you'll never see that once that trim piece is put in. So we're going to act like that's not even there. But that uh, I don't believe that's factory. Um, looking at the black part of the dash, too, this is what I was talking about where the speaker holes and the clips that hold the speaker to the dash, it's actually chipped off the black paint over top of the gray, and it's wore off the top of, um, or the bottom of the black where it meets the blue under this dash pad. You can see it's kind of chipped off down to the gray as well. Around the instrument panel hood is chipped off down to the, to the gray. Um, there's a lot of paint missing down here as well. So it looks like they, sent these through and they painted them. They did a really good job of getting, I don't know if these were masked off or if they had some device that like came down and covered it. Uh, I would doubt they would paint them both at the same time, but it looks really, really good. Um, this might be another spot that I might be able to hit the color and see because there is a, a cover that goes over top of this. The only problem with that cover is it has vents in it and sunlight would have definitely got through 
Uh, but this would have been, you know, kind of up against the door panel and the A pillar goes right over top of it. So hopefully it was shaded. I'm going to go around this in a couple of different spots with that color chart and see what we got. All right. First spot we've got underneath the steering column panel and the blue mist color to my eyes looks like it does have a touch more green than the blue on the dash. It's very, very close. So we'll bring it over here and we'll try to get this situated where we can see it next to something that definitely would have been covered. And that's a really good comparison there. It is a little bit darker than the Regatta blue that's on here. I don't think it's noticeable enough where it's really gonna matter. Now this part of the dash would have definitely been up against the door panel the majority of the time and you really wouldn't have been able to see it. So coming against this side, it is just a touch darker, but I think it's good enough to pass. So for the most part, I'm, I'm gonna say this is gonna be the color I'm gonna go with. Um, I'll check with my SEM distributor just to make sure it's not a discontinued color. This chart is a few years old, but uh, majority of this stuff is still available. Another option that I have instead of getting this in spray cans, SEM actually has this in a mix where I can use my spray gun over large surfaces. Um, for the most part, this dash should be good with a spray can. I could kind of break my pattern um, in the middle of the dash and overlap the color a little bit. Uh, I could go kind of from the top of the dash down and make sure that I don't have too much of an overlap. This SEM, it, it's kind of a vinyl dye. It's a very thick paint. It's made to adhere to plastic, but it will fill in the grain texture on the dash if you're not careful. So you have to be very light coats to begin with so that you do not fill the grain in. And you have to just kind of apply some, some very light coverage to it until you build your color up. About three or four coats of the stuff is all you really want on there. And that should fill in um, or build that texture up with it and not fill it in where it just looks completely smoothed over and completely, um, you know, way too much material. And to match the black on the dash, that satin black is a pretty good match. We've got another one on here called Landau Black. That might be just a little too uh, black. The satin's a pretty good match. I think that's that's kind of got a touch of gray to it. It looks really good in the light. It's a very close match. So we'll go with the satin black and we'll probably need a few cans of that. Do the door panels, the tops of the quarter panels, um, you know, all the vents and stuff that goes to the top. So I'll work on getting some of that material ordered and once that arrives, we'll start to clean this up and get it ready for paint. For now, I just wanted to get it tore down and see what we we're looking at so we can get the correct colors ordered. And again, I still have to check with my SEM distributor to make sure that those are available. So before the dash is painted with those two colors that I pointed out, it has to be prepped. We need to sand it down. We need to get as much of this old paint off as possible. We need to clean it as much as possible. Now, before I matched it up, I did hit it with some degreaser. That's going to get a majority of like armor all and stuff like that off the dash. It's not going to get it off. So I wiped it down with some alcohol, just a 91% rubbing alcohol on a paper towel just to get as much dirt and grease off of it as possible. Then I started sanding with a red scuff pad. You can get these at Walmart, any uh, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, places like that. They carry them back there in the body shop area. And what you want to do is uh, get a good amount of the old paint off. And you want to get a nice dull finish like what I've got going on here. It's got a good bite into the paint, so when we put the new stuff over top of it, it's got something to adhere to. I'm going to go back over this one more time with a fresh pad because I do see a few shiny areas in here that need to be addressed. And one of the things I did notice while I was sanding, and you'll see here, the paint is very thin. This blue wore off down to the gray underneath very easily. I just barely kind of sanded across this area with the scuff pad, and it started to wear off. Even in this area where the black is, it was wearing off on these ribs up on the passenger side of the dash. So I'll make sure that I put a lot more material on there in the future so that it doesn't fade out and also provides a lot more protection and color coverage. 
Um, from there, before I actually put the color on, one step I forgot to mention, SEM does have a hard plastic prep spray. And it's essentially a cleaner. I believe it might have a little bit of adhesion promoter properties to it. It just kind of opens up the pores and gets everything out of them. You want to scrub it really good while you're using that cleaner. And then once that is good and clean, you can go over top of it with the color of your choice. In this case, I'll be applying this very similar to the factory. I'm going to paint the blue first. When you're doing a two-tone finish, you always want to do your lighter color first because it's easier to cover that lighter color with the darker color. So in this case, this blue is definitely lighter than the black. We'll do the blue first. And I will remember, I've actually got several photos uh, saved in my phone where I can see where the break is between the blue and the black across the dash. I'll go over and tape and mask off the blue and then shoot the black from there. I'll do my dash vents and my defrost vent at the same time. That way everything kind of matches. Any of the trim that's gonna go on this, um, I'm gonna order up some dash vents from late model restoration, order up a new pad from late model. Those come in gray, they do not come in blue. So I will get all of that and paint all of this at one time, that way everything matches. Now that I've got the outside of the dash all prepped up and ready for paint, I've got to worry about this frame and get it going. This thing, I believe I got this out of an 88. Um, it was shuffled around a few times since we moved. It's got a lot of just kind of surface rust on it. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just, just surface rust. There's nothing really bad. This is a very thin sheet metal that they put into a form and, and they kind of made the frame out of sheet metal. Um, in the past, what I have done with these I went through with a wire wheel, of course, took all the hardware and these little clips out that uh, different things attach to, and then went through with a wire wheel and a drill and cleaned all the surface rust up. Once I got all the rust off of it, then I hit it with an etching primer that will seal it. What I may do instead of an etching primer on this is I may mix up some epoxy. I think I got a little bit of black. It's an older epoxy, so I'm not going to really use it for anything important on the body, but it'll work out just perfect for this because if it flakes off a little bit, nobody's ever going to see it. It's going to be under the plastic. The only part that may uh, present any issues is if it does flake off this bottom part, obviously it would fall down onto the carpet and you would see it. Most of this frame isn't visible, but some of it is. Like if you look up under the dash um, from the floor, sometimes you can see the corner pieces here. So to give you kind of a perspective of what's going on, this is where the steering column comes through. The fuse box is right here. The dash goes over the top. This would be the top of the dash, bottom of the dash. Console bolts in um, in these four locations. Your uh, AC and heat controls are here. The radio would be down below this. And of course your glove box would be in this area here. So that just kind of lays out how this dash is oriented and where everything attaches. All these little clips will need to come off. And again, I'll bag those up. Um, the latch for the glove box door needs to come off. I'm going to go through, and I thought about sandblasting this thing. Honestly, I think it's just going to take way too much time. And I am concerned with warpage um, with something like this. As thin as the sheet metal is, even though it's kind of doubled up and bent over itself, I don't want it to warp and cause any issues when I go to put the cover back onto the dash. So we'll just do this by hand with a wire wheel. I'll throw a mask on, throw a wire wheel in the drill, and just go to town getting all of this stuff off. Once I've got it cleaned up enough, then I'll come back and hit it with some epoxy, and we'll be good to go from there. After about a half an hour or so with that drill and a wire wheel um, on the drill, I really wasn't happy with where I was getting. I didn't feel like the metal was cleaning up as much as I would like it to. So I switched over and I used my Harbor Freight Blaster. And I know that I said that I didn't want to in fear of warping the metal, but with this blaster um, at a very far distance away from the metal, you know, a good six to eight inches back off of it, it's really not going to put that much heat into it. Now, if I was down on it, trying to get every bit of this pitting and stuff out, yeah, it may put some heat into it, it may warp it. But again, it's pretty flimsy and it's going to be flimsy. So even if it was to warp a little bit, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I could always get out the hammer and dolly, straighten this thing back out. 
So for now, I'm really happy with the results. I blasted both sides. This is the back side that faces the firewall. This would be the front side that faces the passengers um, and the driver. So I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. This will look really good once I get some black etching primer on it. I'm going to use SEM etching primer. And I know in the previous clip, I said I was gonna use epoxy. And the more I thought about that, the more I realized that this is not something that's gonna be seen. The prep time and all of the stuff that goes into using epoxy is just gonna make one heck of a mess. Um, this has to be degreased and wiped down front and to back. Um, then I would have to spray, mix up the epoxy, spray it, clean my gun, all that stuff. You know, for a body panel or something that I absolutely want some rust protection on, you know, that makes a lot of sense to do it. But for this thing, the etching primer is going to be just fine. This is going to be in a climate controlled somewhat environment, you know, inside the car. It shouldn't get exposed to any kind of water or anything. So it should be just fine with the black etching primer. Well, like a lot of things with project cars and just the body shop world in general, I went to order the etching primer that I just talked up in the previous clip is to the best stuff out there, so to speak. And what I found is it is now about $26 a can. That's way more than what I really want to spend just to primer the stash. What I came up with, I had to go run up to O'Reilly's and grab some stuff. And I found this rust barrier and it says that you can paint over rusted and bare metal, which that's what we've got. Um, one thing I noticed, the flexible rubberized finish. So we'll see how that turns out. I really don't want like an undercoating type material on this, but that flexible rubberized finish may help the vibration between this frame and the dash when it goes back on. Ford didn't really design this with the NVH or the noise vibration and harshness that most modern vehicles are designed with. Every point of contact, there's usually some sort of insulation, um, some sort of rubber pad, some, you know, something of that effect to take up the vibration of just driving um, down the road and hitting bumps and things like that. Fox bodies are notorious for vibration and harshness, little rattles in the dash, little rattles in the doors, things like that. And Ford didn't really have much insulation in these cars. So my plan was to um, provide a little bit of insulation in between the frame and the cover when we go to put it back together. Hopefully this rubberized finish <laughs> will help with that too. So I'm gonna throw a few coats on this, flip it over, um, coat both sides really, really good. I'm gonna drag this outside in the sunlight so it hopefully cures pretty quickly and we'll go from there. So after two heavy coats inside and out with the Duplicolor rust barrier, I'm really happy with the results. Uh, it's not rubberized like the can said. The texture on this is just a very flat, smooth texture. Uh, it's paint. It does not feel rubberized at all. Even It doesn't feel anything even close to like a Plasti Dip where you've got a little bit of a rubber grip to the, the texture. Uh, this is not like that. I'm very happy with it. We'll see how well it holds up as it gets moved around the garage because I'm nowhere ready um, to putting this in the car yet. I've still got to get a dash harness, get it all cleaned up and get it ready to go on this frame before we can put it in the car. I do have some other brackets and like the pedal boxes and stuff like that. I will use this paint on those parts. Um, so far, I'm happy with what I'm seeing and it's definitely cheaper than the SEM stuff that I was talking about. So for now, that's going to be it for this dash frame. We'll come back and do another video in the future once I get my die in so that I can get my dash done. And in that video, I'll also do all the little trim pieces that go on the dash so that we have a really good idea of how to restore a Fox body dash. This is just a part one video of a multiple part series because there are multiple parts to the Fox body dash. And I want to be as detailed as I possibly can in this process for anybody out there that's wanting to restore or thinking about restoring their Fox Body Dash. This has been one of the longer videos I've done, and I know it's kind of boring in some points, and I've tried to be as energetic and informative as I possibly can. This is a really good how-to guide for someone that's looking to restore an interior not just a Fox body interior, not just a Ford interior, but the same thing applies regardless of make, model, um, 
material, things like that. So hopefully you guys have learned something from this and I'm not just being super long winded for no reason. I definitely appreciate if you've made it this far, please drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're working on. Let me know if this will be helpful to what you're working on or something that you're thinking about doing in the future. Uh, be sure to thumbs up the video if you like what you saw here. Again, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what's going on. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you're notified when I upload a new video. This is going to be part one of Restoring a Fox Body Dash. We've got multiple parts to this one, just like we've got multiple parts to everything else we're working on. So with all that being said, thanks for watching. Remember to stay gloved up.